Okay, today I'm going to show how to remove fuser sleeve and fuser roller from a fuser unit um, for any, uh, this is for TN720 and TN750 toner type uh, fusers, basically all printers that use that toner. Um, they have a problem um, a lot of times not making it to 100,000 pages as it's supposed to. Um, the fuser is going to go bad and usually it's because of the fuser sleeve and the roller. So, I don't have a new fuser sleeve, but uh, I'm going to try to fix it. I have some uh, fuser sleeve lubricant. It's specially made for a fuser element. And uh, I'm going to try to fix this fuser using that. And we're going to test the printer if it's still going to do the smudges on the paper. Um, so, first thing I'm going to show you, I'm going to use this pick. Or removing one of the, uh, the two springs on the sides I'm not sure why they're a different color but this is how it came from the factory of brother printer so um, these two springs we're gonna remove and we're gonna need a screwdriver uh, flathead in order to do something so we're gonna remove this and it was probably removed before um, I just put it back so to keep it all together be careful with these uh, wires here we're going to untangle them here remember how they were so we can put them back later um, this is the fuser sleeve this is the fuser roller pressure roller so to get to them it's not too hard first we're going to remove the springs and Actually, the first thing we'll do is we're going to remove, yeah, the, the fuser, um, I'm sorry, the springs. So we're just going to put the hook around the spring and you can see where it's latched into. And I'm going to pull it, if it's laying down, I'm going to pull it up and towards me. And that spring is set. We're going to do this one. Be careful not to damage anything or hurt yourself. It does need some pressure, but not much if you have a tool like this. Um, now, we're going to remove this plastic um, clamp over here. And that will release this rod. And to do so, we want to make sure we do not lose it. Without it, we will not be able to fix the uh, fuser. So this rod clamp that I'm talking about, I'm going to remove it. So we're just going to push it. And it should pop off. There, I was just able to do it with my fingernails. This one is off. You want to make sure you put it in a safe place and not lose it. Now our the the rod is free now. We can remove this plastic piece here. And plastic pull this plastic piece here and it'll pull the rod out. Do it gently. Keep everything together like it was, so you don't have to bother figuring out later. We're going to set it aside. Now, this plastic is now uh, free to remove. It just, you just wiggle it a little bit and it comes off by pulling towards you. Now, this got stuck in there, but we do not want to damage that. No way. Okay. And uh, like I said in the previous video, this fuser only has about 12,000 pages on it, which is pretty new. And it's already doing that um, skipping pages and everything. So this is all um, we have access to the sleeve right now. It wasn't too hard. We're going to just pull it up. And these wires here, they go into this 
area right here just remember where it goes it goes into this kind of a hole here um, and we're going to straighten the wires out and pull them out now you want to be really careful these plastic pieces you just remember where they go I usually try to keep them on the side of uh, where they were so I'm just gonna place one here and this one here you want to make sure you use gloves when you do this uh, the whole process so in order to remove the sleeve we will also need to remove this plastic piece here be super careful with it it breaks uh, easily on a lot of the printer fusers that I've done before if it breaks you're gonna have a problem basically it's gonna be uh, something that you will need to glue together and when you're doing this try not to damage the sleeve because we're trying to save this one usually we try to replace if we already got that far but um, this plastic piece it just unclamps and that's where you will need the uh, flathead screwdriver just gently prop it up to the side and the plastic piece comes off like so we're going to keep it with this one now the fuser sleeve is set to go out I'm going to make sure this wire is safe sometimes I disconnect it but in this case I don't think I want to do that um, it just comes off uh, seems like it's it didn't break anywhere so there was hardly any lube in here and it, whatever it was there already is burnt out due to that low amount of lubricant in there the lubricant that goes in is usually white this one got black already so our fixing process we do not want to damage these here these are the elements that touch the screen the sleeve so I'm just going to gently clean off any of this old lubricant. Like so with just a dry paper towel. Just continue going through and it picks up all that gunk very easily since it's not oily. Okay, so it's all now uh, clean and uh, ready to go. I'm going to put some lubricant on it. Put these up a little bit so they're not hidden. And I assume the problem with this fuser, since it went out, uh, started doing the problem of paper jam and stuff at such a low page count, is because they didn't put enough lube in here. Um, what I'm using is something I ordered online. I've used it before on other laser fusers. Is this G8050 um, fuser L uh, sleeve. Uh, this is what it looks like. It's just a white paste um this is 20 grams is going to be enough for about 10 uh, sleeves so you just pick up with your finger about this much and we're going to put it on plastic parts you're going to put it on this mainly on this element here that's the one that heats up put it on this plastic that's where the roller also, uh, the sleeve rolls over this. It also rolls over this here. I don't want to put too much also, and neither do you. So, but we're going to put it over any parts that it rolls over. The fuser slides over. Okay, I think that should be enough right here. I'm going to try not to waste it and put whatever is left back. At this point, I'm going to change my gloves. I'll put this over here. Okay, on this one, the roller does not look good. Most likely, it's the problem of the fuser unit is the roller, um, even though the sleeve didn't look good too. But we'll try to fix it as much as we can just using that lubricant. And we're going to clean this roller. Just wipe it clean. 
but you can see the damage on it already it's it's, it's gonna go very soon so since you're at it just best to change it out it, it's not hard you just remove the two screws over here you remove this plastic piece and it frees the roller so we're gonna put this uh, fuser sleeve back onto the fuser element be careful with these not to break them just gently to avoid collecting a lot of the loop that we put on it um, and then be careful with this another contact here so the fuser is on I'm going to clean it to remove any of that but um, also when you start using it when it heats up it should just burn it off um, on the outside part but gently wipe it with a clean paper towel to remove any um, extra oil from the loop so this is where we're at now we're going to put the plastic piece back put the these wiring over where it's supposed to be into these channels here um, and down now we're gonna put these plastic pieces back over the plastic piece that we already put in and this one goes on the left side we're gonna put this back into the fuser assembly um, and then we're going to slide the cords in here to the same place they came from okay they should just push down through out and just make sure they're carefully put away here so they're not in the way of anything um, go under here so just do one quarter at a time and then wind it over here oops Okay, this is how it should be, back in place. Um, the spring, make sure it's hooked on here, on the bottom hook. And we're going to take It's a bit harder to put it back than taking it off. But make sure it's hooked on the bottom in order to put it back on the thing. Hooked it over. Now taking this spring. Also making sure that it's over the hook on the bottom. Closing this here. Make sure, making sure everything is aligned. And... Twist it around and put it back. Be careful not to hurt yourself. Okay, so we have the springs back on. What we need to do now is just put this plastic piece on. So they go over and away from you. They have to lock into these here. Um, if you could see, this is what they're locking into, okay? Both sides, same story. 
So it's already locked in here. And now we're going to put the rod back in just like it was. I'm going to put it into the hole here on the left. Slide it through like so. I'm going to put this back. And our little plastic piece that goes over the clamp that goes over the rod. And we're going to push from the side, from the left side, to make sure it's not coming out. It's just basically right there. So we have that clamped on. And this is not going anywhere. So we put the fuser back together. I'm going to put it into the printer. We're going to run a couple test pages to see if that problem went away. So putting the fuser back into the back of the printer goes like this here. Connect it to the power supply. Tug the cords under this clamp. Put the white towards white. Be careful with these. Like I said previously, it's, it's very easy to damage. This one goes here. And like so here. So we're, we put all the screws in there. Fuser is back in. Going to put the covers back. Put the deflexer back, and we're going to put the tray back in, and we're going to test the printer. Okay, I'm going to send the user settings through, just we like we did. Um, let's see here. It's going to print those. Just wanted to show you what it was before. This is what the pages look like. <clears throat> and this is what they looked like before. They were all smudged, especially... Um, Judging by this page here, very smudged. I will show you what this looks like now. Oh, we ran out of paper. I put some paper in there. And so the report is printing. Like I was saying, this is what it looked like before. And you can verify that this is the printer that we're talking about. Um, the page count right here um, so 1257 this is a quality comparison to it 12591 um, so you can see that is the same printer according to that serial number here that we changed the so you can see the smudges here on this one and this is what it looks like right now this is a great printout this is this is very good so I'm not sure how long this is gonna keep on going uh, the, the way it is now with the good quality but um, definitely we solved the problem for now like I said it's best to just change those out fuser sleeves and fuser rollers but at least now you know how to do that um, hopefully I was able to help sorry it was a long video um, subscribe Scroll through it, um, like the video, and hopefully I can give you more tips in the future. Thank you.